Father, we ask now for your Holy Spirit to anoint each one of us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit. I even love saying those words. But what a vast subject this is. And I believe it's beyond comprehension, at least with the natural mind. And the Bible teaches us that. And that then leads us to ask this question, how do I get to experience this baptism that is taught in both the Old and the New Testaments? And Selwyn Hughes comments on verse 28 of Joel chapter 2. I will pour out my spirit on all people. And this is what Selwyn said. This verse is one of the most outstanding declarations of the Old Testament in relation to the Holy Spirit. For it promises that the day will come when the Spirit will no longer be given occasionally or especially, especially, but it will be given constantly and perpetually. What a mighty promise of God that is. It's a promise that we need to stand upon and live out. And brothers and sisters, we're living in that day and the fulfillment of that prophetic word began over 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. And this coming Sunday, the body of Christ will be holding services celebrating this outpouring of God, the Holy Spirit. However, many will attend these services worldwide even without understanding or having been taught the scriptural teaching on the Holy Spirit. And I must make it clear to you and remind myself that this subject is so vast that we need to understand that in a 10 to 15 minute sermon on the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to cover everything about the Holy Spirit. It is about 68 years since I received my baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I'm still discovering today things about the role, the nature, and the work of God, the Holy Spirit. Firstly, God wants all to understand that to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you first must be born again. We are born of the Spirit of God at our conversion. But to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. There is one baptism, but many infillings. The baptism is the start of your journey, and it was the start of mine. And as we learn to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, He always leads us, and I love this, he always leads us into an ever-deepening relationship with Jesus Christ. And to me, without that deepening of my relationship with Jesus Christ throughout the years, I think Christianity would have been very dull instead of being very exciting. And the older I get, the more excited I'm getting. And I think... And I believe with all my heart that my God's mighty. The Holy Spirit is mightily involved in your conversion. For he is the one who shows us our need of Jesus Christ. The need for repentance that brings reconciliation with Almighty God. And all this through the merits of the shed blood of Jesus Christ 
upon the cross of Calvary. In this work of the Holy Spirit, we learn that this is God, the Holy Spirit, taking the initiative to bring us to himself. In our immaturity, we, many of us, believed that we made the first move. But that's not so. But it is in this way, it is God himself drawing us into his kingdom. That, to me, is the love of God in action, whilst we were yet sinners. The love God has for you and for me is beyond measure. Therefore, God's plan and purpose in salvation is that God takes the initiative. And you know, after a, a practically a lifetime of following Christ, I'm glad that's the case. Because if it was left to me, I'd have made a mess of it. But once we give our lives to God, he holds on to us. He keeps us. He strengthens us. He reveals things to us. And God gives the Holy Spirit the task of revealing to us our sin, our need to repent and to accept the work of Christ until we are reconciled to him. Then the only way for that to happen is through Christ Jesus. There is no other way to Jesus Christ. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And if you turn now to the Acts of the Apostles, I've heard it said that this book could be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit because we can see how the apostles and the disciples of Jesus are changed once they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 5, someone once again comments, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is an experience and it's available to every Christian. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is an experience available to every single Christian in which he is immersed in the flowing stream of the Holy Spirit. Are you immersed? Do you feel you're immersed in the Holy Spirit? If you're not, there are many infillings for you and I to receive. As a result of this flowing stream of the Holy Spirit, we receive special empowerment for service to God. And I've often said, often spoken, that God never calls us to do anything without first equipping us. And so many times, even in my life, I have said, no, I can't do that. But the Lord says differently. I have been preparing you. The baptism in the Holy Spirit who strengthens us in so many different ways is what God does for us. He prepares us when we don't even realize that he is preparing us. So Jesus spoke at different times of the Holy Spirit being with us, in us, and upon us. He is with us in order to convict us of sin before conversion. And I'm repeating that because that is something that is not always taught today. And it's foundational to you and I receiving the Holy Spirit. So he's with us in order to convict us of sin before conversion. He enters into us at the moment of conversion and comes upon us to give us God's given power for service. It's a God-given power and it's for service. And you know, once we start moving into knowing God, and this is something that's very dear to my heart because God keeps hammering it home to me, the need to know Almighty God. 
And once we start into that knowing God, and that happens as we learn how important it is that we come quickly to understand that knowing in itself is not enough. In this day and age, and I am sure you would agree with me, those of you who are observant and watch what is taking place with the Spirit of God, you find that people very often today, not maybe fully grounded in the Scriptures, are trying to go at it in different ways, not always God's way. It's not the sensationalism that is important to us. It's the following. It's the being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So knowing something in itself is definitely not enough. Because while God is eager to reveal things to his people, he desires us to respond to what he reveals by us being willing to operate in that knowledge. And let me explain this a little bit further. God reveals something to us, and I hear it said often today. And it makes me very sad. He reveals something to us, and you hear it said. That was a lovely wee message. Have you heard that? And that's as far as it goes. That's not far enough. That's not God's requirement from you and from me. So because he's eager to reveal things to his people, God's heart is that he wants you and he wants me to respond to whatever he reveals to us. He wants you and me to operate in that knowledge. That means being obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And in later years in my life, I find God is actually hammering that home with me, not letting me forget it, not passing it over lightly, but following and giving God the desires of his heart. But think about Acts 1 and verse 14. It says that they all join together constantly in prayer. And if we are truly walking in the Holy Spirit, there will be unity. We don't need to pray, I feel, for unity. If you and I are walking in the Holy Spirit, there will be unity. But we don't often realize that. But we will also have a strong leaning to join in prayer to engage with the Holy Spirit who empowers us to pray in the spirit of prayer. Have you ever asked God for the spirit of prayer? If you haven't, start doing it. And he develops our praying through the Holy Spirit into intercessory prayer. And that is greatly needed today. People who are prepared to pray to God but stand in the shoes of the people they're praying for. Feel what they're feeling. And only the Holy Spirit can bring us to that place. But you and I have to respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And verse 14 has strong connections with the disciples having to choose someone to replace Judas. Remember, they all join together constantly, it says, in prayer. And so I'm thinking on verse 14 was this, that once we have confidence in what God has promised us and give ourselves to it in simple faith, there is created a spiritual expectancy that will not rest until that promise is achieved. To me, that's how God increases our faith. When we believe God, then we are prepared to move in faith to whatever he says. The 10 days in which the disciples waited prior to Pentecost gave them the opportunity to lay aside their self-centeredness, their self-will, and much, much more, and to open themselves to the same flow 
of the Holy Spirit, which energized and motivated the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's worth thinking about and meditating upon. This, then, is the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit throughout our entire lives. Self-centeredness and self-will are signs, if we are honest, that we're not letting the Holy Spirit lead us into all truth. It suggests that we're still living after the desires of the flesh rather than the Holy Spirit. And these areas in us are areas that the Holy Spirit wants to help us to address. And if we want to move on with God to a deeper level, a greater depth, these are things that once the Holy Spirit puts his finger on it, points it out to us, we must act upon it. And we're the ones that can only blame ourselves if we're slow in moving forward with God. It's not God's fault. It's your fault. And it's my fault. So these are the areas that the Holy Spirit wants to help us address. And in these areas, if they exist in our lives, and let's be honest about this, we would have to say then we're carnal Christians. And part of the work of the Holy Spirit is to be our helper, our comforter, to lead us into all truth and to empower us for service to Almighty God. We're a privileged people and we don't always realise it. But he also imparts the gifts of the Spirit severally as he wills, according to Scripture. He always glorifies God the Father and God the Son. And you know, we often see evidence that there are genuine Christians that think that the Holy Spirit is optional. And they're losing out through lack of sound biblical teaching. Brothers and sisters, let's get back to the Bible. That is the way. That's God's way. That's how we get to know God. That's why Moses prayed as he did. And I constantly bring this up. Teach me thy ways, O Lord, that I may know you. You want to know God at a deeper level? Get into his word. And he'll not fail you. My prayer tonight is that you will understand that baptism in the Holy Spirit was received by Jesus himself. And as an example, it was given as an example to us to show that we are not misled into missing out on one of the greatest blessings that God gives so generously and so freely to all who belong to him. I'll finish by sharing how I received my baptism in the Holy Spirit. But let me say, first of all, David last week said a thing that made me smile because I have a friend and exactly the same thing happened to her, Church of Ireland. But she received the Holy Spirit, didn't know what it was, but she had been seeking God and has, to this day, a wonderful heart for God. And I love that. But she said that she didn't know what it was and she thought she was going mad. So she said she prayed about it. And uh, she asked the Lord then, she said she actually cried it out to God uh, to send someone across her path that uh, could explain it to her. And the amazing thing is, she says that God sent me well, look, I, I'm sorry, but I still laugh at that today. But that's how God amazes us. And he never ceases to surprise me. He never ceases to excite me, as I said. And he never ceases to challenge me. That's good for me as well. But at the time that I received my baptism, and not everybody receives it the same way, okay? So don't worry about that. 
But I was living in Blackpool at the time, attending a church in the south end of, of the town, a little Pentecostal church. It was called the Bible Pattern Church on Waterloo Road. And the Holy Spirit put in my heart the desire to be baptised in the Spirit. I was led to seek God for it, but I was led also to have a, a very, very strong determination that I wasn't going to stop seeking for my baptism in the Holy Spirit until I got it. And every night, whenever I come home from work, I went up the stairs to my bedroom, got down on my knees, and I, this is how the Holy Spirit led me. It didn't come from me, it came from the Holy Spirit. I got down on my knees and I started to praise God. In the Pentecostal church in those days, in my young days, that's a long time ago, but nevertheless, I've never forgotten it. You were taught to praise God. Go into times of praise as well as prayer. Okay, and I loved those times. I remember the little church that we went to at a time here when I, when I was younger, lived in, Black, in uh, Belfast. The very floorboards shaking. And the power of God was so strong. You couldn't doubt that it was God at work. You just couldn't doubt it. And I want to see more of that today. I want to see the place. And not only the place we're in. I want to see us. I want to be shaken with the power of God. That's what motivated the disciples on the day of Pentecost to go out and change the world around them. We need that today. We're too timid. I'm speaking for myself here. And yet often you're accused, you will be accused of getting into their faces. Speak out the love of God. Tell them what God has done in your life. But anyway, to continue with that, I did that anyway. And I think, if I remember rightly, I must have done that for six months before something actually happened. But I still enjoyed the times of praise and prayer. And it, it drew me closer to God, even just praying. And um, one night I was going to the evening service. In those days, we went to church not just once on a Sunday. We went three times on a Sunday. You went to morning service, you went to Sunday school in the afternoon, and then you had the evening service. Uh, so, and there was no nonsense. We went as a family, there were five children, and we all traipsed across town and, and to our services. And I've never forgotten that. That still has an influence on my life. But anyway, um, I was reaching, I don't know if you know Blackpool, but on the Waterloo Road, there's a bridge over the railway line and there's, it's like a humpback part that you walk over on the road. And I uh, reached the start of that bridge and then just out of the blue, I knew that I knew that God was saying to me, I've baptised you in the Holy Spirit. Of course, I, full of joy, went into church and I said to this older lady, well, to me, she was old then. She wasn't really old, but she was old to me. And I remember saying to her, Ada, Ada, I've received my baptism, all excited. And she said to me, not a smile on her face even, uh, have you? But I realized afterwards, she was waiting to see the fruit from me receiving the Holy Spirit. Um, so I went into, there was a little room to one side, uh, as those who were seeking their baptism used to go into after the service. And I went into this little room anyway and sat down, just simply started to praise God. And the next thing, I was speaking in tongues. And I wish I could explain to you how I felt. The Spirit of God just brought such a peace. There's no way I could describe it to you. But it was so strong, I've never forgotten it. And experienced it right down throughout my life. That's what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. The Holy Spirit is not optional. It's essential for us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I have kept this talk, not I, I felt it was a leading with God, very simple, 
because you can't cover it all. As I said at the beginning, it's a vast subject. There's many, many more people could talk on it, perhaps even more eloquently than I, tonight. But you know, don't give up. I went to that, again, not through me, through God, putting it into my heart, and I thought, I'm not giving up. And there is a stubbornness, I have to be honest with you, in me. But my thoughts were, I'm not giving up on this until I get it, Lord. And as I said, six months. Some people pray for it for quite a number of years. And others get it, like David Hamilton and like my other friend, Jackie. Not knowing what it is. They're born again, but please note that when they do get it. But I hope and pray that God fills your mind with his word and with the desire of his heart to receive, if you haven't got it, your baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's a life-changing moment. The night after I had received mine, I went to the prayer meeting, which was a Monday night, and I never missed a prayer meeting, and I never, from a young age, I never missed a prayer meeting, and I never missed a communion service. They were my two favorite services. But I hadn't been able to pray audibly. But once I had received my baptism, now, I was nervous, yes, at getting up and praying audibly uh, without any notes or anything or anything like that. But I, the Holy Spirit enabled me to do it. And what a joy I came out of that prayer meeting with that night because I had achieved something, not me, the Holy Spirit within me had achieved something that I thought I could never do. And that can happen to every single one of us. But you have to reach out. Ask for it, receive it, and then it doesn't finish there. There are the gifts of the Spirit, but you need to study those. And we always need to go deeper with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, you're such a generous God. You're such a loving God. And I thank and praise you for every person here tonight who has made that decision to follow your beloved Son, to receive the Holy Spirit, and to know what it is to have their lives changed, their way of thinking changed, their whole attitudes, their whole outlook on life and on others changed by the power of your Holy Spirit. For any who haven't got it, Lord, Open the windows of heaven, I pray, and impart your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.